So for this example of a while loop that's um, accessing an array element in order to do its check of continuation, it's a little bit different in that there's some manipulation of the of the, the value that's inside of the, uh, the that, that makes up the index. Um, for the previous, let's see if I can bring up the previous. Um, so we had two while loops. We had a while loop that was straightforward. Um, but this one here is a little bit different in that we have a while loop. And we're modifying the index. So no matter what happens with this index that we see here, right? Let's say that i, typically for an array, i is going to be never negative, or negative indices um, aren't part of our language, just not part of C, not part of Java. So the i, the index within an array, is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and so forth. And so the possible indices that are coming out of this would be whatever 2 times um, i would be. So if i is a 0, 2 times 0 would give us that. So for i, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the possible um, array elements that we would select would be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So it's only selecting the even indices. But whatever the array index is, we're going to have to multiply it by 4 and then add it to the starting address of the array. So I'm going to have to multiply all of these by 4. Um, to figure out how far apart they are from the beginning of the um, from the beginning of the array. So for the element who's at a sub two, he's actually eight bytes away from the beginning. For the element who's at a sub eight, he's four times eight or thirty two bytes. So these are the distances away from the beginning of the array. And notice that I had to multiply it by 4. And what I multiplied by 4 was the value that was previously multiplied by 2. So this is all really 8 times the index. And so in order for me to do the 2 times i and then multiply it by 4, I could split this up into two steps. What I'll do is just do this in one step. I'll just um, um, do something like this where it's going to be um, 8 times whatever i is. And in order to get 8 times i, we know that that's equivalent to just simply i shifted left um, 3 times. And so that's how we're going to multiply by 8. i shifted left 3 times is the same as i times 2 to the third. So let's do that. I shift it left three times. It's going to be, because um, we need to extract this out before we can do a comparison. So that's going to be a shift left logical. I itself is uh, going to be T0. And we're going to shift it left, shift and left three times. We will add that value, which is 8 times i. t1 is now 8 times i. We're going to add that value to the beginning of the array. And the beginning of the array is stored inside of a0. And we'll store this. Um, We'll just reuse T1. So now I have the beginning, um, or actually I have the um, the or the address of the array element that we're trying to extract. Now that I have the address, I can do a load word with that address and store it. So I'll do a load word with that address, dollar sign T1, 
and I could have stored it anywhere, but I'll just reuse T1. And so there's my SAL. I've extracted A, um, A sub 2i. And what I want to do is compare him to K. So it looks like it's a not equals. It's typically with the while loop, it's more efficient to do the opposite of whatever that statement is. So I'll do a branch if equals. So branch of equal, and I'm going to compare T1 to T2. And if those two are equal, then I don't want to do anything. I want to get outside of that while loop and just exit. So if they're equal, if they're not equal though, then I want to do the add um, x equals x plus plus uh, x equals x plus one so that's an add immediate and then i equals i plus one that's another add immediate so um, so that's going to be t3 t3 and a one and then the i is t0 t0 and a one um, and there's one thing that I have not included that's far too easy for me to forget is that I have to jump back up to the top of my while loop. So I should put a jump to the top before I exit. And then this would be the top. So that's the, the structure that you can expect to, to see. Um, so let's clean this up a little bit. And if you at this we should have the same answer that was there so there we have our shift left logical our add and our load word we used a three this time because we needed to multiply by eight um, we added a zero to the offset of the array element. We did our load word so that we could extract a sub 2i. We compared um, a sub 2i to k. And if they are equal, then we want to exit. If they're not equal, then this continues on. So this is the x plus plus, this is the i plus plus, and then jump back up to the while. So remember that when you want to extract something from um, from memory, you're going to need to do the three instructions. It's a shift, left, logical, and add, and then a load word. Um, and that's kind of any time you're doing an instruction like this, a sub i, that guy is going to have to be multiplied by 4. And so the shift, left, logical does that. And also remember that if it's this way, where I'm actually storing something into memory, I'm still going to have to determine what that address is. So that's going to be a shift left logical. There's going to be an add. But instead of doing a load word here, you're going to have to do a store word. And whatever that value is for j, you're going to put them into this um, whatever that new array address is. So it's gonna kind of go this direction. So be careful with that. Um, this one is going to be a shift, an add, and a load. This one's going to be a shift, an add, and a store. Loads move data from memory into a register. Stores move data from a particular register into memory. So, and then there's a kind of a counterintuitive part of this where we're taking J and moving in one way, but when you write
write the instruction using a store where it goes in another direction. So be careful of that kind of confusing, possibly confusing logic.